So, Simon, I'll just tell you a bit about him just to contextualise him. He learned his craft on British series, um, Waking the Dead and Spooks. And then Casualty he, as well. Casualty. Hightailed it out of there to LA in 2003. Yep. Worked on a number of shows, um, including Without a Trace. And then a six year stint on Criminal Minds um, as showrunner for all or some of that. Last two years. And then he most his most recent credit that some of you would have seen, I'm sure, is the 10 part series Versailles, which was a French Canadian co-production. Highest budget drama made in France. Yep. And made in English, which made a few people cranky. Yep. So what, <laughs> what do the French think about making their drama in English at the moment? Well, I think I think the the um, they <laughs> It was when I got, got the, the idea, when they sent it to me, I was like, my writing partner had studied Versailles, uh, David Walskoff, who did Spooks. When, when we got it, I sort of looked at all the things and the reasons why I should go and do it. I couldn't f figure out one of them because it was just like, it, 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 to, to, for us to, to take that piece of history and make it in English language means we were going to get the shit for writing it. And, and the blame for writing it in the English language. But they really were, at that point, Carol Pluse was looking at the, the international market and realizing they needed to be part of the, of the machine and they needed to matter. And Netflix was coming. So they needed to sort of figure out, well, who are we? Who are we in the world of drama? And how do we, how do we matter? So, you know, brilliantly, they realized that they had Louis XIV really had created new media in his own time with his brother, um, Philippe. And so they had this extraordinary story that had a precinct to tell it in. And that precinct was really gave birth to um, you know, music and poetry. It was the first ever musical took place in, in Versailles. So they had the right to tell the story, um, but they had to have the bravery to be able to raise the money for it you know, 27 million or 30 million euros to them was a lot of money. That's nothing, nothing to an American show. I mean, we, we spent 70, 80 million a year on Criminal Minds. So it, to them, that's a lot of money. So, uh, but but, but the, the, the brave part was them realizing they had to tell it in the English language. So, you know, and so for me, the, the, I immediately said no when I got the idea. And then I sort of looked at uh, Philippe uh, Duke of Orleans and I just saw his character as this extraordinary man who was gay in that time who dressed as a woman and who went to battle dressed as a woman and was an amazing swordsman without being you know, a bit of a joke about it but you know so he he uh, he was this amazing guy and he fucked anybody he wanted and he behaved the way he wanted to behave but he also stayed in Paris and he brought all his mates up because he used to party like a nutter and he'd bring all his mates up and they would some of them were Mollier and his brother would take them and make them his friends and he'd say, well, I'm paying you to play in because Louis hated Paris. But then Mollier arrives from gay Paris and, and then, the, then this, this, this birth, this revolution of me and I just felt that it was really important as a storyteller to kiss the ring of Louis and Philippe and try and tell it. Um, and, 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 but I didn't want to, when I say I, I do want to say David Walsencroft is, is part of I. We didn't want to do a period drama. We wanted to do a modern drama that felt modern and bring in a, a youth and a, a, a dem demography that they hadn't really got before. And, and so it wasn't supposed to be a literal, it wasn't supposed to be uh, successful. We don't need to get awards. It was more about making something accessible and, 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 and that worked. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it wasn't Wolf Hall. It was supposed to be as crazy as it really was. Uh, so. I remember when we first delivered it, there were, there were certain facts in, there were certain facts that we took from the history that were so outrageous. And we, it couldn't have been more outrageous than real life. And I knew that, I was trying to explain to the French that we needed moments that, excuse me, you, you talked about, moments of outrageousness. Because in the, in the new world of, of television, you need to find moments that people talk about on premium cable, whatever that means. Moments that really define a show, like if I say to you Red Wedding, you know what that is. That's really important now. Uh, and so we needed to find some moments in there, which we did find through history, that put us on the map. And, and I knew that they would uh, be outraged 
I knew the French would be outraged and I knew the English would be outraged. I didn't realise how outraged they'd be. They were really outraged. <coughs> and um, to the point where they took it up in Parliament. And Helen Mirren's nephew, Simon Mirren, the pornographer, you know, it's like, fucking, you know, and I was a bit like, wow, really? And then, uh, but it kind of helped because it became its own marketing machine. Um, and, and I really take my hat off to the French. And when I first got there, they took me to the Palace of Versailles and gave me the key and went, it's yours. And it was closed and they opened it for me. I mean, I'm from South East London, I'm a builder, and they trust me and there's a lot of expensive shit in there, you know. So I'm walking around it just going, this is crazy. Um, but I didn't really know anything past about page 12 in my head because I hadn't studied history, whereas my, thankfully my writing partner had actually studied at university. But I was just blown away by it. And then by the time I came back again, he said, we're, we're thinking about not shooting in Paris. And I said, wait a minute, you showed me the palace. <laughs> I want the palace. No, no, it's not possible. I went, I don't understand why it's not possible. He said, because there's no, because of the tax. And I said, look, you drive through a museum every day that never got touched in the Second World War. A few bombs, maybe. But you, you drive through a destination that, that the Americans have never seen. Very few people will ever get to see it. We need to shoot that. It's no, it's impossible. I said, well, how would it be possible? We would have to get a tax break. I said, well, one of you must know the president around this room. And they're looking at me like, they're already, I'm already annoying them now. I said, one of you knows the, the president here, definitely because it's so small. And one guy looked at me and he went, I know the president. I went, well, go and ask him for a tax break. Oh my God, it's impossible. I said, just ask him. I mean, it's your, your history. You want to make a difference. You want the world to see your history. Then ask the president for a fucking tax break. So anyway, he gave him one. He gave us one, personal tax break to Versailles. So, so there we suddenly were shooting in, and it was imperative to that show that we actually shot in the places that we shot it in because I, for me, I just wanted to walk away from Versailles knowing that we'd started a different kind of TV era, that, that we would populate the, because no one ever really talks about the importance of behind the camera and the crews, and especially the people that built those sets. And those people that built those sets were related to the people that built Versailles. So they came with a passion. So f we got from the crew of Versailles so much more than they would have given to anything else. And I used to visit, my father was a carpenter, so I love the smell of wood. So I'd go down every day to see the sets. And, and in French, they were like, thank you so much. This is seriously, we're so proud to be doing this.